Welcome to HD Nation, your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. I'm Patrick Norton. Hey, and I'm Robert Heron. We got a good, well, we got a, it's, we're excited. I've been on vacation. You've been working with Veronica. I am, I am actually, can, can you show the t-shirt really quickly? I, I got this at Maker Faire, actually. It's a, let me get in the right spot here. It says but, Oakland. Oakland. And it's got one of the cool uh, shipping. Gantry. Uh, gantry cranes? Crane, gantry Crane? Yeah. thing. Awesome. There's a which, bunch of them. Which were the inspiration for? The at -Nats? Yes. In Star Wars? It's exciting. I was just down in Jack London Square mm -hmm. over in Oakland, and I realized I don't walk through that area enough, and what a, if you get a chance and you're in the Bay Area, visit. There's a lot of yeah. cool stuff to look at. They had the Liberty Ship ramp still there. And it, Pretty amazing. Uh, uh, there's a lot of history. And a, a lot, lot of, cool of history. And good food. <laughs> yeah, and actually, it's look, I'm going to say it. Robert and I, uh, you you use cable. I have cut the cord. I, I would like to cut the cord. Uh, what would be even better, maybe, is unbundled channels. The idea of being able to get just the channels you want. And the federal government in Canada is pushing to have Canadian companies unbundle channels. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it means basically no more tying channels uh, that you don't want to channels you do want when you go to make your subscription for a particular service. Right. Now, questions include, will this increase the price per channel? Yes. And will some channels disappear completely due to low yes. popularity if this legislation happens? Will anyone miss them is my question. Also, will this trend actually migrate its way down south of the 49th parallel? One can only hope. Well, it's funny, right? So if we go sort of the Intel was working on creating sort of a la carte or at least cable delivered over the internet, uh, Apple's supposedly working on uh, some sort of cable system delivery. People, I, I, people often say, I just want HBO or I just want this or I just want that. Here's the thing though, the web of contracts and business relationships uh, that, that make the cable industry are dense and can, just complicated. And I was actually on a panel with uh, a, a couple of, I will call them muckety mucks, in sort of the lobbyist group for the, for the cable industry in the United States, and one of the sort of biggest executives in online, or excuse me, in cable, not online, dude hated online. Uh, and this was years ago before online was a big deal. But what they fundamentally said is if you wanted to say have ESPN, you would be paying $24 a month for ESPN. And a lot of you know, channels you never hear of or think of up in the nosebleed section, they pay the cable provider to carry them. So having the nosebleed channels you don't know anything about may actually subsidize ESPN or some of the other channels you love the most. And it's messy and it's complicated. And ESPN's one of the heavy hitters too in terms yeah. of, oh, you want you want regular ESPN? Well, you also have to take every other flavor we offer as well, which yeah. is now adding up to, I've lost track of how many ESPN channels there are, but I subscribe to every one of them, unfortunately. It's live sports that keep me really kind of hooked into paying a subscription right. for my cable service. Because I can't get every game or every race I want to see on over the air. Right. I wish I could. Or streaming. Or, or maybe streaming. the quality is not as good as you want on streaming. It, it's coming. It, it, it's mishmash for that. Some sports are covered great. Like MLB right. baseball is probably one of the best examples out there right now. But for things like NFL, I'm not sure how well that works so far in terms of, I don't think they have a dedicated app yet. But a lot of other sports too. I know like motorcycle racing, mm -hmm. they have some dedicated apps for that where you can download a whole season or have access to the whole season on a mobile device. Right. But until that just becomes like being able to pick and choose specifically what yeah. you want and to be able to get everything, uh, it's, we're kind of in limbo. And, if, and I'm now looking to Canada to lead the way. And if cable and broadcast is paying billions of dollars for the rights to uh, carry games from whatever it is, the NBA, the NHL, the MLB, blah, 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 they're probably not going to be extremely friendly uh, to putting that online, although in some cases they are, and the, the MLB app is amazing. I ran into Adam Sessler, the, the baldest host on Rev3 Games, even balder than me, and he claimed he couldn't get a proper surround sound set up for his home theater, and if I understood him correctly, essentially his spouse was in the way of him burying the room in speakers. So we're going to talk about spouse-friendly speakers. Um, and it's really funny, because it's not just now, if, if you were like, I, if, pretend for a moment, if you will, that Robert Herod is super audiophile home theater guy. Getting close. Yeah, and if he needs a set of like $55,000 or $85,000 watt puppies that weigh like 7,000 pounds and are six and a half feet high, you're building a separate room where you're putting them in a garage. Those are problems I want to have. <laughs> Those are problems you want to have, but, but if you're that speaker person, you're done. If the, you know what I mean? If, if your spouse, significant other, girlfriend, parents say, no, you can't put the giant speaker in the living room, you can't put the giant speaker in the living room. But you can get decent home theater surround sound with speakers that fade into the background and still deliver awesome audio. Look, small, number one. 
and uh, not black are probably two of the big things, unless you have black walls in your house, in which case black speakers should fade in nicely. Um, <laughs> tiny sats and subwoofers can sound outstanding. One of my personal favorites uh, are from Orb Audio. The website, they sell them online, orbaudio.com. And these are really cool. So you notice something there, you might not be able to see it, so I'm gonna pull a couple examples out here. Um, they're small, they're like four inches, and they come in lots of different colors, which means if you have a spouse, and Beautiful. by the way, this isn't a gender thing, because one of the most passionate emails I ever got was from a woman whose husband was tone deaf and didn't care about surround sound, and she wanted, he was really big on something that would blend in, but you can get different colors that might match the wallpaper or the furniture or just blend in in totally. a nice way. And because they're, they're separates in a sense, you, you can start small, like with yeah. just two speakers, or in that case, you can double them up to create a louder loudspeaker system with, the, with a pair of them together and using that as a single channel if you want it. Yeah. Uh, another really good option if you want things that something that's very subtle is in-wall speakers. And I would not have recommended this until I went into a place here in San Francisco called Performance Audio. It's basically a small, customer service oriented shop and it's really nice to actually have a good audio shop somewhere so you can listen and hear stuff and they were uh, using these uh, the tree out I want to say they had the bronze in place and some of the other ones but this essentially goes in between the two by fours uh, on in your wall oh, uh, it's awesome. a complete box it's got a magnetic cover and they sounded fan fantastic and they weren't insanely expensive um, another option for in-wall speakers that's fairly affordable paradigm goes from like 1500 excuse me uh, pardon me sixteen hundred dollar thirty three hundred dollar in-wall speakers all the way down to stuff that's like four hundred dollars two twenty nine one hundred and twenty nine there are a lot of options that's in cool this those area. designs are like what you would get in a tower speaker setup yeah. a large tower speaker setup but you can still have that in the wall and out mm -hmm. of the way so uh, you know, Aperion Audio, another example. Um, there are tons and tons and tons of brands in this area. You don't have to spend all the money to get excellent, excellent sounds. You do, however, have to be able to cut a hole in your wall to mount the speaker and run the cables. And if you rent, that may frighten you more or less. Oh. If you know how to patch plaster, it might find, you know, frighten you, you less. But look, you don't need six foot high speakers to get amazing uh, surround sound in your home theater. You just need a good speaker and they can be really small and they can be really, really pretty. And I would also saying. add real quick, if you are remodeling your room right now yeah. and you, you haven't decided <laughs> if you want speakers or if they're gonna be external or in the wall, put the Run wire in the wall cable. now. Yeah, put yeah. the cables in there because speaker cable is cheap and it's a lot easier to do it while you got the walls torn apart. Mm -hmm. And then and compared to after, when everything's nice and painted and sealed up, and then you make that, I need to go install speakers in the walls. Uh, yeah. Do you mind if I tear the pretty walls up again? I, I, that might not fly. You but. don't necessarily have to tear the pretty walls up again, but you have to drill holes and move things and yeah. Do the work you can ahead of time, Yeah, especially if it's inexpensive. And if, especially if you have a fireplace. <laughs> Nicholas tweets at Patrick Norton, at Robert Heron. Do you have any info on that gray Hoverman antenna setup you mentioned last month? Would love to cut direct TV. I think I need to make it abundantly clear that the amazing free over the air television service that you will soon know and love will not include almost any premium cable channel. I'm just saying. This <laughs> or, is true. or any basic cable channel. Cable does not come over the air. Unless you're talking like those low right. channels, like your two through thirteen, those are the ones right. you're going to get. And in addition to some of the some of the digital channels that your your cable provider might be providing, you will get those up in the upper channels as right. well. But you're talking about the Hoverman antenna designs. Dwight Hoverman, back in the '50s, created yeah. this thing before computers were around, and apparently computers a lot of trial around. and error and good engineering, and he came up with a design that basically shows. Oh, well, that's kind of not the prettiest page in the world, but you get an idea of what that is. Some signal performance, but let me get over to. This page also kind of gives you an idea of the green being the wire layout, the, that thing in the back that looks like a board could be a two by four or whatever, but yeah. you've got a couple of designs with an easy parts list that you can put together and including good, good summaries of how to assemble it properly. And it is important if you're gonna build one of these to actually follow the directions carefully yes. because the, the, the measurements down to the inch are required to get the best performance out of it. So when you go to, when you go to dive into this project, uh, pay attention to those instructions so you yeah. do end up with good performance or you're at least able to go back and correct it if you need to. When you're reading this, whether you're up on jedsoft.org or DIY, uh, antennas.com when you're reading things like you know uh, utilizes six pairs of half wave reflectors ten pairs of half wave reflectors the wave is basically relating to the wavelength of the uh, energy you are trying to capture from the ether I like saying ether it makes me happy but like the man says measure twice cut once do it right 
the performance will be amazing and you will spend like no money. People have built these out of coat hangers. Indeed. Um, and they work really well. 60 year old technology, still, still running strong. While we're talking about antennas, uh, we actually got some interesting audience comments, HD Nation crew writing in. Uh, last week we talked about over the air versus cable HD quality and, and what the differences might be. And actually, Kenneth in San Mateo, California, this is interesting. Yeah, Kenneth is using his TiVo Premiere to record the HD broadcast of the same channel and program, but one tuner recording the cable TV feed and the others capturing the over the air right. signal. And he provided some data. He was able to pull this content off of his TiVo and look at it on a computer and show some file sizes because that's really one of the ways I said to do any kind of real comparison is to see what's going on in terms of not only the file size but the megabit. And here he is recording a news program at 5 p.m., uh, channel 161 and then channel 5.1. And notice the size of the file difference. We're talking almost a 2x difference here, twice as much data, and almost twice the bit rate as well. And there's some possible reasons for this, uh, one being better compression. One source could be using MPEG-4 versus MPEG-2. Right. More likely, though, it's also maximizing profit. Uh, do you need all that bandwidth? And if you don't, can you squeeze it a little bit more to make more room for other channels or reduce the data feed? So we should point out, the, the, the smaller file, the 9 megabit per second file, was coming over cable. Exactly. And the 18 megabit per second file was coming over the air. That's it. And, and I will say, too, that for, for a news program, uh, you will notice, if you ever look at most news shows uh, mm -hmm. when, they're, when, they're, when they're broadcast, the sets tend to have lots of static elements, no, very few things moving in the background and things like that. So it might not be the best test for this. It could be just that the cable company is doing better compression. Now, if you're looking for perhaps the nightmare scenario to test compression, if you're using, say, different encoders, on the disc of the Disney Wow uh, disc that we show a lot, the Blu-ray disc, there's actually a, a sample on there of video that is considered really a nightmare case for uh, the worst case scenario for trying to compress video mm -hmm. and still maintain quality. So. I have a feeling the cable folks probably are. It'd be neat to know if, if Kenneth, I believe, uh, actually saw a visual difference between the two feeds, if he goes back and forth. Um, right. I'd have to do that with like still images or something. But yeah, be aware that you're over the air is almost like a free pipeline to the, to the viewer. So yeah, and it goes up to 19 plus megabit. Right. Well, so it's easier for them to run that at like full bore. The cable company wants to stuff as many channels as it can over the cable. Uh, you know, over the air, they basically care about one feed. No, there's probably, there can be two or three or four feeds based off that particular tower, but, you know, there's, there's sort of an economic motivator to make cable channels skinnier. And at the same time, they're also incorporating new technologies to say, oh, we know what channel you're right. looking at. We're going to minimize some of the other channels, so we're sending you less and less bandwidth, just basically optimizing their own systems. And it's... It's good for their bottom line, but hopefully it's not degrading picture quality. That's really the yeah. bottom line for me. And with 4K, it gets really interesting because they actually had to come up with an entirely new compression format to make 4K fit. Ooh, ooh. I just got word we're getting another 4K TV in from the biggest LCD manufacturer in the world, or one of them anyway. It begins with a big S, and I'll leave it there. I wonder who that'll be. Should be soon. That's it for this episode of HD Nation. Please subscribe. Join us at revision3.com slash HD Nation. Hey, that's right. And email us your comments, questions, or suggestions, yeah. or post them right down below. HD Nation at revision3.com. That's it. And until next time, thank you for watching.